Dodger fans, as you know, there are good years, there are bad years, there are some glorious years, and that's what our guest is concerning himself with. Paul Haddad is the man behind the the Dodgers site called DodgerGlory.com. That's correct, isn't it, Paul? That's correct. Well, welcome to KFWB, Dodger fan. I'm glad to have you here. We need you, we need we need to weigh down, you know, the Dodger fans. Get everybody on this side of the building who's a Dodger fan. Everybody who doesn't think that they have it, you can just go over on the other side of the building. We'll get to you later. But right now, we're going to talk about the glory years. By the way, how are you weathering this season, Paul Haddad? <laughs> well, I thought we were in store for some more glory years, and we may be in the next few years. But with the injuries that they've uh, sustained right now, are definitely not some glory years. They're they're more like. Uh, uh, one day at a time years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're obviously a Dodger fan. You grew up in L.A. rooting for the Dodgers? Absolutely. I'm a Dodger fan, and I'm a Vin fan. And Vin is the one who got me into the Dodgers. I was like many Angelinos who fell asleep at the transistor radio under their pillows. or you know, lying down at night and supposed to be sleeping. And it, I just happened to come of age during that great core of Garvey, say, Lopes, Russell, Dusty Baker, Hooten, Sutton, all those guys, Reggie wow. Smith. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I just fell in love with the team and with uh, Vince Calls. So you lived your life as a Dodger fan through the calls of Vin Scully. He was the guy that brought the team to you, the, that made you a fan, that gave you all the excitement and all the glory years. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I sometimes wonder if I would have even become a Dodger fan if not for Vin. I mean, wow. I, I imagine I would have growing up in Los Angeles, but maybe it would have been a few years later. It's just his voice was so ubiquitous. Everywhere you went around Los Angeles, even before I, I became a fan, I would hear his voice coming out of just, you know, cars, car radios that red lights when you're stopped at an intersection. Or when we pull up to the full service station at the Union 76 station, you'd hear him coming out of the office of the gas station or in the park if you're having a picnic. Everywhere you went, you heard, you heard Vin's voice and Chick Hearn's voice during basketball season, and sure. they were just part of the the uh, all-soundtrack of my childhood. Well, okay, you're a child. You love the Dodgers. Now you're a man, and you decide that you're going to immortalize or uh, categorize and make available to other Dodger fans or people who are becoming familiar with the team what the glory years were like. How did you put together your site? Why did you do it? What was your inspiration? Well, the inspiration was I started getting sort of bummed out during the McCourt years when the team was... <laughs> yeah, well, you weren't alone there, were you? <laughs> no, I wasn't. And I think a lot of us were pining for those glory years back when the team really was had a sustained run every year, being except for 1979, but mostly throughout the 70s and, and the early 80s. They were always in pennant runs. They made it to the World Series in 74, 77, 78, 81, with mostly the same nucleus. And I just I got really nostalgic for those years. So as it happened, I recorded a lot of games off the radio during that era from 77 to 81. And I, I just kept them in a shoebox for 30 years on, some, on cassettes, because I recorded them off the radio and, and distilled the best moments down to about 10 cassettes that filled the shoebox. Right. And I started pulling up those cassettes and listening the, to them again, and then I digitized a bunch of them, and, and then I uploaded them to this website, dodgerglory.com, and, and I wrote a book about those years as well. And the book is High Fives, Pennant Drives, and Fernando Mania, oh, a fan's yeah. history of the Dodgers' glory years, 1977 to 1981. Wow, so you really are um, a chronicler of everything Dodger. Well, you save the you save the audio and you've written a book. Yeah, but an accidental call in chronicler because who knew I was eleven to fifteen years old during those years and I had no idea at that point that they would pay dividends thirty years later in my life and that they would touch so many fans as they have. So my obsession with Vince Scully and the other announcers and recording games off the radio turned into something that proved very fruitful years later just by accident and it just happened to coincide with Fernando Mania the 1981 World Championship, and a lot of great things that happened to the team. I, I couldn't have possibly predicted that. We're talking with Paul Haddad. He's the man behind the website called DodgerGlory.com. And I guess a lot of people go there to enjoy games from the past, hear a few highlights, listen to a few home runs. Yeah, there's even old commercials on there, like if you want to hear an old Datsun commercial or Western Airlines, both of which, as products at least, are gone now. Right, exactly. Um, but, yeah, I, I get a real kick out of uploading just – dig through my files and occasionally uploading some stuff. I'm going to try to build it up so it's over 100. Um, and because I think these things are a treasure, and they're really 
meant to be hurt. And I've even shared them with the Dodgers. They actually used some of the Fernando Mania clips I have when Fernando Valenzuela was having his great 1981 historic season. And the Dodgers didn't have some of the audio recordings from those games. So I lent, I lent them to the Dodgers, who in turn gave them the ESPN when they did a 30 for 30 documentary on Fernando Mania. It was called Fernando Nation a couple of years. And they actually used some of my clips in that documentary. Wow, you had some valuable uh, relics of Dodger Pass. You know, and it's not that far in the past, but there they go. They were lost, and uh, you, had, yeah. you had the copies. You know, it's interesting to me. I, when I, there was a premiere of that 30 for 30 at Dodger Stadium, and I talked to uh, a gentleman who's no longer there for the Dodgers, and he said that they actually have a lot of recordings in the bowels of Dodger Stadium, were his words, mm. and that no one's ever really sifted through all of them. And I thought, like, well, could you get a couple interns? Uh, I, I would do it for free. I mean, it seems like a priceless possession that you want to tap into, and I don't know if they, they have or uh, if they plan to or what, but that's, that's something it seems like you'd really want to mine. Well, yes, and also uh, the Dodgers of this year have renewed their relationship with uh, with retired players that they bring back. Uh, Sandy Koufax is the one that comes to mind beca- uh-huh. because he, he had sort of a ragged relationship with previous management and previous owners of the team, and they weren't they weren't taking care of the pe- the people that had been Dodger fans forever enough to bring him back for parades, for special events, for throwing out the first pitch for opening day. It's important to bring back your older players, and a lot of teams do that, but the, at the one that don't, usually the ones without much of a vision or an understanding of their fan base. Oh, I, absolutely, because that's got to be uh, so much of their fan base or people. It, just from, from any m- promotion I've done with my book or just people who know I've done the book or book signings, it's amazing how many people still so fondly remember those years, and that's a big part of your fan base, and, and you would certainly want to tap into that as much as you can. And, of course, you've, you've experienced it with the people who use your site and experienced it as a, as a Dodger fan. So much of the experience is generational. You were into it because yep. your grandfather, your father, or in some cases your mother, whoever is the fan yep. in yep. the house, they influence their children. They become fans, and, and, and it's not a casual thing. It's a very important emotional thing that's part, of, that's part of the family, that's part of growing up, that's part of their life in L.A. Absolutely, and I make make a point of always asking my kids. I'll have a game on, usually the Dodger game, and I'll say to my kids who are nine and seven years old, "Who is this announcing?" I'll sort of like play dumb, and they'll say, "That's Van Scully." <laughs> so I want to remember, <laughs> yeah. I want to remember that they can rem- when they're older, they can tell their kids, "I used to listen to Vin Scully. He right. was the best, and I recall his games." And and I'm just I'm happy that they're old enough that they will remember him. When people come to your site, DodgerGlory.com, what is the most used element of the site? What are they? You can probably measure that. What do they go to the oh, most? By far, uh, the section that I call Dodger Shoebox. Yeah. And I call it Dodger Shoebox, of course, because that's where I kept my tapes for all those decades. Uh, but that's by far the most popular um, uh, uh, feature on there. And in the Dodger Shoebox is all your recordings? Uh, I would say at this point there's only four. Four percent of them in there because I had a total of fifteen hours of recordings. Keep in mind, I used to record entire games. I mean, I was a pretty nerdy kid. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> and then I would, and so when I took the best parts, that equaled about fifteen hours of of, of uh, tapes. And so of those fifteen hours, there's maybe uh, in my total an hour, maybe on my on my website or something like that. Well, 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 I'm going to have to go there and make some recordings and play them on the air, get, get some of the best ones out there. I hope I'm not right. violating any uh, baseball rights, but, you know, I'll make it short and they can sue me later. Yes, and, yes. And, and we'll talk We'll talk about it with you again. Now, there is this matter of the Dodgers of this year, Paul Haddad. Who's, yes. your, who's your favorite player this on this lineup? I've always, been, uh, I've always had a soft spot for Andre Ethier, although he certainly tries your patience these days so with the slow start that he's had. <laughs> I, I think I identified with him the most because he wasn't necessarily the most talented in terms of raw talent. You'd probably have to go with Matt Kemp for that. But I like, especially like in, I think it was 2009 when he had six walk-off uh, hits or six walk-off homers, it might have even been, or four mm-hmm. of them were homers and six walk-off hits. And he just seemed like Mr. Clutch, and he seemed to be somewhat of an overachiever uh, for, for many of those years. And just quietly would go about his business and was one of the more underrated players in the game. I, I actually make a case in my book that if you looked at on-base percentage and slugging percentage, Andre was probably the third best outfielder the Dodgers had in Los Angeles since moving here from Brooklyn, uh, at least through his first six or seven years. And I know that's going, his numbers are going down this year, but he, he matches right up there with Reggie Smith and, and above other players like Dusty Baker and Rick Monday, who, 
many people like. I mean, his, his numbers are much better if you combine slugging and on-base percentage. Um, right now, I, though, I have to go with uh, Scott Van Slyke. I mean, who doesn't love that mustache? Yeah. I, I, think, <laughs> I think there's a nickname developing Scott Van Stash, which I think is going to hold. <laughs> I like that. But, yeah, yeah. I, I say bring up the youth, and, and I want to see these young guys go. You know, I want to get excited about the team again, and often that happens when you get surprised rookies who just uh, are out there prove, trying to prove themselves, and they, they surprise you. Yeah, one minute they're an isotope, the next minute they're Scott Van Stash and hitting a home <laughs> run to win the game. Pa- exactly. Pa- yeah, of course, Kershaw. Yeah. I can't you know, forget Kershaw. No, He's well, no one can forget him, especially the right. batters uh, for the other teams. <laughs> Paul right. Haddad is his name. He, his site is called DodgerGlory.com. If you're a baseball fan, you got to go there right now and check out some of the Dodger shoebox recordings. Thanks a lot, Paul. Hey, thank you, Michael. It's been a pleasure.